the machine shop called and said that our block with the busted intake valley has more problems than that. It's got freeze cracks around the center freeze plugs at the side of the block. That's weird, right? Because it's supposed to kick out the freeze plug. That's the whole point behind an expansion plug or a freeze plug is when that water expands, it'll push that plug out and that's where it will get its ability to expand, not the block. In this case, I think the freeze plugs were probably rusted in place. It couldn't kick them out. And so what did it do? It swelled that block up until it cracked. So now we've not only got a busted up intake valley area, very badly busted up, but we also happen to have busted out areas on both sides of the block around the freeze plugs. It's interesting because the broken area in the valley is the same on both sides in the same area, meaning they're just horizontally opposed to each other. One side is a little bit worse than the other one, but they're in the same area of the block. The real downside to this is the shop is saying they're not able to tap that metal back down and weld it or drill the end of the crack and stop it and repair it. They literally have to cut out an area where all that broken metal is and weld in, graft in a new piece of cast iron. Now, let me tell you one of the big risks to all of this. The shop that's doing the welding said, listen, I can't guarantee anything. I'll do it for you and I'm charging you for it, but I cannot guarantee the repair. This is on you, Mark. If you want to take a chance, we'll take a chance and try to do it. But if that thing overheats, if it cracks, if it swells out, if it doesn't have oil pressure, if it doesn't run right, it's on you. I'll just make the effort to do it. To me, I think it's worth the gamble because we know that the value of the car with the numbers matching engine is so much more than without the numbers matching engine. I think it's worth the gamble. When the guy at the shop started talking about how they're going to repair this, it was fascinating to me. I wish I could have gone up and watched it. They have to get this into a chamber where that cast iron is incredibly hot. You'll look at the guy's hands and they have these asbestos gloves on and everything looks super hot because it is. They, they've got a blanket around the engine trying to keep it cool and keep it from distorting while they're welding in this area. But I guess the trick to cast iron is it has to be incredibly hot. You have to have the right everything, the right material, donor material, the right heat, the right temperature, the right ambient temperature. So it's really a bit of a science and fascinating to see. So at this point, the shop has all of the welding done on it. They welded up both of the intake valleys. They welded up the side of the block. The bad part is when they did this, because so much heat was generated that we had a twisted block. So when it went over to the machine shop, and again, same report I got from that guy, I'm not guaranteeing anything. I, I can't guarantee a darn thing. I will try to save this engine for you. And so when it's twisted like that, they have to lock it down into this jig, kind of like we do in our frames, and redo the line bore for the camshaft, for the crankshaft, untwist the engine, straighten it all back out again. And it's just hard to even imagine that you could do that. Now, one of the things they had to do along this process is after they got it all straightened out, they were able to bore it 40,000 silver, which is great. I thought we were gonna end up having to have sleeves in it. Another thing that they had to do was to put bronze guides in where all the lifters go in the lifter guide area. And he told me that they're not even Mopar sizes, they're actually big block Chevy sizes. And it's something they do on big block Chevys. After it was all straightened out, they had to bore it out so far that it wouldn't take a Mopar lifter. So they put this bronze guide in there and that's what it runs up and down on. But overall, I've never seen an engine ever in my life get that much engine work, that much stuff done to it at one time. So the good news is we do have the engine back from the machine shop, back from being welded up. Like I said, it was a complete mess. If you look at it during the process, you thought, man, there's no way. Right now, it looks good. I mean, even cosmetically, the repairs look good. On the outside of the block where the freeze cracks were around the expansion plugs, they cosmetically dressed that up real nice, gave it a texture, and you can't tell. Once that's painted, you'd never know that thing had a crack on the block. The intake valley, until the intake manifold goes on, yes, you can see the outside footprint of the repairs, but absolutely fantastic job. Now, if you recall, I mentioned because of the distortion to the block and it was all around the lifter area that they had to put the bronze bushings in there, the bronze guides. So you can see clearly that they stick up a little further than the factory ones. That doesn't matter, there's not an interference problem there. But if you watch that lifter itself, it is a really nice tight fit, Every probably tighter than it would have been against the cast iron. Now, whether or not it's gonna work, we're not out of the woods. Just because it looks great doesn't mean it's gonna work. So Doug's gotta get that thing put together. Okay, so as soon as the engine came back, Mark handed it off to me for assembly. 
so that I could get this thing put together, assembled, and on the run stand as quickly as possible. Since there was such a sense of urgency on this engine, I, I figured I'd enlist Brian's help to come over from assembly and help me put this engine together. So Brian is our new assembly tech here, and he's showing real promise. So I wanted to give him an opportunity to see how we put these engines together and why some of the things that we put on an engine have to be put on in a certain order. I was absolutely thrilled when Dougie asked me to help assemble the 383. I've always loved cars, and I've actually built a few engines on my own. Of course, they were always Chevrolets or Brand X crap boxes, as Mark likes to call them. I was always a super fan of the show, actually, so I've watched all the old episodes of Graveyard Cars, and I always thought to myself, it would be amazing to actually learn from Dougie. He's such a great teacher. I am going to set the head on there. Just like that. That's what we okay. like. Yeah. So we got our Highland bolts here. That's a Highland bolt? That's a Highland bolt. Yeah. How do you know that? Well, it's an H. So we have to remember to put our wire holders on. That's right. Just like that. When I'm assembling the engine, I put both heads on. 17 bolts per head. I torque them down in two stages. I start with 45 pounds per square inch on one side, same on the other. Then. I up the torque to 75 pounds per square inch and I go over all 34 head bolts again. This is our first engine build. It is. Together. It's exciting, isn't it? It is. So we're gonna do this 68 times. <laughs> <laughs> you had to say that. <laughs> I am already confused. Okay, there it is. I like to go over them one more time. 64 times? We're gonna times? do this 102 times, Doug. <laughs> 